All right, so this one is just to spread a bit of uh, useful information that's on uh, Vox's blog. So you can just go to his blog and read um, the advice from Spain post. But basically, there are a few things you can do for this coronavirus, which and one of them is to drink hot drinks, uh, like tea, coffee, that sort of stuff, soups. And to keep hydrated, keep your mouth, um, you know, hydrated. So drink a little sip of water, whatever, every 20 minutes or so, they say. Uh, that's obviously for people that are, you know, working in hospitals and stuff. But um, also gargling with, uh, you know, lemon or salt or vinegar, like antiseptic stuff. Now, all, these are all things we've been doing anyway, before I this post or anything, just because it's common sense. And another thing that I've noticed is that, is that um, you know, like sort of home remedies kind of work. Um, and one of the things that they mention is that the virus survives three or four days in the throat before it gets into the lungs. So if you start to feel a tickling throat or that sort of thing, immediately have hot drinks and use these methods, you know, that are on, on his blog. Another thing that he doesn't mention on there, but which I've found to be very effective in whenever I've had the flu before is um, sage. If you make a hot drink with sage in it, it's, it basically kills everything. Um, I didn't believe it when I, I found out when I was in Kazakhstan. Because <clears throat> I was staying at a place where there was this Italian girl that I got a bit of a flu and she was, you know, and it's like minus 40 degrees over there. And I was like working all sorts of hours and not sleeping and stuff. And she said, no, I've got some sage that'll sort you out. And I was like, what? You know, and I just thought, oh, hippie chicks, you know, they just, they'll believe anything. She says, no, 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 I'll make you a hot drink with sage. And that's what she did. It's like this dried sage, put it in there and made me a drink. And it was actually tasting a bit, a bit bitter, but quite pleasant overall. And um, yeah, sorted it out. It just killed it dead. So um, I would use that. The other thing to be careful of is metal surfaces because apparently the virus can survive several days on there. And also, if you do go out, when you come back, take all your clothes off, shower, wash. You know, any foamy soap will basically kill the virus. And if you can't wash your clothes right away, just put them in a box and take them out to the sunlight, leave them hanging in sunlight for a day or two. Um, we generally just wash the stuff, but, um, you know, either way it works. And also try and load up on uh, vitamin C and zinc as well. We've got all those vitamins. I think we might not have zincs, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so those are just the survival tips. And then I wanted to address another point because um, I had a little bit of a run in with yet another millennial um, on Social Galactic, this peasant cretin who is basically saying, oh, I would totally like hug people with coronavirus. They're like, well, put your money where your mouth is. Go to a hospital and give comfort hugs to people that you know are positive. Oh, I would never go to a hospital. I would hug a, f a friend or a family member that had, but I'd never go to a hospital. Uh, why? Well, because you see, in a hospital, you know they have it. Yeah. If it's just your family friend with the sniffles, like, oh, he's just got a flu, it's fine. But if you go to a hospital where you know there's coronavirus patients there, oh, well, you know. And that's the thing. I had another one of these guys, you know, one of this, these people that I hung out with online, Again, retarded millennial. I mean, this guy is special. He, uh, you know, the sad thing is that he comes from a really good family. But anyway, um, he was a huge fan of uh, Jordan Peterson, which, you know, anybody can make that mistake. I made that mistake for about a couple of days when I first, uh, the only thing I saw about Jordan Peterson, I saw the interview that he'd done with a British woman. And I sort of thought, yeah, cool, the guy's got some balls, you know, it's fine. And then because of that interview, I started to look, look some other of his videos and I watched about, I don't know, maybe a total of 25 minutes total of three different videos. And I was like, that's just something off about this guy really badly because he'll start to say something that almost makes sense. And then within like a minute or two, you'll say something that just, it's like nails on a chalkboard, you know, just sort of like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Ah! Oh, what? What did you just say? You know, and then um, I think it was Fox that posted a link to a letter that he'd written to his father. 
Now, if you read the letter that Jordan Peterson wrote to his father, and you actually read English and you understand what you're reading, it's absolutely clear that the man is completely fucking insane and that he believes that he can change the world by having people think what he wants them to think so that they create a different reality. That is actually what this freak believes. It's it's beyond the egomaniacal. It's, it's lunacy. Uh, plus, never mind his dreams about eating his cousin and, you know, oral sex with his grandma. Whatever, the guy, plus the pictures of him in S&M leathers, you know, he, he's just a mess. But this millennial was defending him through and through. Now, Jordan Peterson is great. And I was like, dude, you, you're just wrong. Now, the latest one that he came up with was about a week ago. He was like, oh, this is blow over. It's nothing. It's just a flu. It's nothing. We're all going to die. You're all, you're all scared chickens. We're all going to die. That's all what you're doing. And um, we'll make some predictions. So his prediction was less than 200 dead and it's all blown over in a couple of months. No one will even remember what it was about. And I said, okay, I'll offer you $1,000. I'll bet with you $1,000 that six months from now, it's still going and that we're going to hit the 200 number. What, six months from now? You know, just because I wanted to be 100% sure that I would win. But then after a couple of days, I said, you know what? I reckon we'll hit the 200 number before the week's out. And sure enough, in the United States, you now have over 200 dead. Now, I'm not happy about the 200 dead. But what I'm saying is, how do you, you know, if you're that stupid ass millennial that, that was saying that nonsense in the first place, how do you like go through life being so wrong, so spectacularly wrong time after time after time and just, you know, pretend like it didn't happen? And the same with this Melvin guy on Social Galactic, you know, just complete moron, talking absolute nonsense, doesn't know what he's talking about, hasn't got a clue, and trying to pretend that he knows, like, oh, I, I won't discuss with a layman, an ignorant layman. Nah, look, buddy, ignorant is not something that has ever afflicted me in life. And my layman skills are often well beyond the so-called professionals in their profession. So, you know, that's irrelevant. But just look at the facts, you know, and, and again, the thing that you got to do with these millennials, force them, put them in a corner, put your money where your mouth is. I'll bet you a thousand bucks. Oh, he went real silent then. Same with this guy. Well, go hug somebody in a hospital. Oh, no, I won't do that. Oh, well, there you go. Then you're talking shit. But he did make one point um, before. Apparently, he muted me. I don't know. I can't be bothered. It's not like I continue the conversation. Um, but he did make one point, which was saying, oh, why are you so aggressive? And you always have to bring the drama into it and publicly. And, and you know, it's, he was like trying to imply that I'm attention seeking. Look, I don't really give a shit, right? I don't care if I've got two followers or 20,000 or whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm doing this because I feel like doing it. That's it. Um, as for the so-called internet drama, that might be a valid point if you didn't know me and you didn't know how I think and whatever, you know, it's fine. Maybe the average person watching this, oh, the Kurgan guy, he just cares about like clicks or whatever, you know, fine. You're going to think like that, think like that, it, whatever, you know, it's not, I'm not going to change your mind about what to think about me. I don't give a crap. But the point of why I do it has got nothing to do with internet drama. It's got to do with the fact that the education of the average person has been corroded drastically over the last 20, 30 years. And people don't know how to think now. They literally have no idea how to think. They don't understand what logic is. They don't understand what basic mathematics is. They can't do percentages. Honest to fucking God, it's it's soul destroying. You know, imagine being surrounded by monkeys. That is pretty much my experience throughout the day. And the thing is, you're not going to teach these monkeys how to do calculus from one day to the next. No. But what you can do is use rhetoric, which works very well with these morons because they don't know how to do dialectic, to start to browbeat them into like, look, you're stupid. Do you understand that you're stupid? You can't do that. You don't understand what you're doing. Two plus two is not nine. And we're going to keep beating you in the head with, you know, shaming your stupidity to the world until you stop and learn to think learn to take a little bit of the advice that's been given to you. 
Now you can say that's uh, mean the way I go about it or whatever. Again, I don't care because as I've said before, why do you have cattle prods? Why do you think cattle prods exist? Because they work. And I'm the same. I'm a cattle prod for the cattle. You know, they, they need to like get out of my way or learn to go in the direction I'm telling them because I know better for the most part. And those few that, you know, are better than me, can prove me wrong, have got a better way, they're not going to listen to me anyway. If they're smarter than me, if they're better than me, if they've got you know a better way, great. Maybe I'll listen to them. Once I can see what they're doing works, hey, I've got no problem instantly dropping what I'm doing and say that way is better. I've done it before many times in my life in things that were part of my life for years and I literally dropped them from one day to the next when I found something better. So I got no ego about that. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people do have an ego about that. And I will use that. Of course I will use that. And of course I'll leverage it. And of course I'll become as irritating and as painful and as under your skin as I can. Yeah. Because I don't like stupid people. I really don't. And I don't like the stupidity that the stupid people perpetuate just by nature of the fact that they are a majority. I am an oppressed minority. That's right. I'm an oppressed minority and therefore I will fight tooth and nail against the horde of morons that I find myself surrounded by. That may sound uncharitable, but it's not really. Uh, because you see, I, again, I am trying to foster a certain um, seriousness of, of mind, seriousness of thinking. You see, if you get a free pass every time you fuck up, how much are you going to pay attention? You know, let, let's say you, you bump the car, you know, your dad's car. You're a kid, you start driving, and you dent your dad's car once, twice, three times, four times. And every time it's just like, oh, well, boys will be boys. What's going to happen is eventually you're going to run somebody over, run over a kid, kill a pregnant woman. Who knows? You know, because you're clearly not paying attention. Now, I'm not saying it should be extreme where you bump, you know, you put a scratch on the bumper and you get beaten to within an inch of your life. That's not great either. But I can guarantee you something. If you do scratch the bumper and you get beaten to within an inch of your life, you're going to pay a hell of a lot more attention the next time you're in a car. It's just a fact. You know what the other sad, sad, absolutely true fact is? I don't like it, but it's absolutely true. Pain works a lot better than pleasure at educating human beings. Human beings are lazy, greedy. They've got all the flaws of all human beings. So they would rather sit on their ass and steal something, then get off their ass and work for it. That's just life. So, and trust me, after essentially, well, I've been in martial arts literally most of my life since I could pretty much walk. Um, but, you know, call it whatever, call it 40 years, call it 30 years that I was, you know, uh, not just training, but also teaching probably about 20 something years or whatever and i've seen it time and time and time and time again you can tell a guy what to do in the right way in a correct way in a nice way a million times he won't listen three slaps to the face his iq jumps up 50 points it's amazing and in a martial art class that's absolutely allowed like do it that way do it that way do it that way Oh, but why'd you hit me? I'm going to hit you again in a minute. Do it the way I told you. Oh. oh, oh, now it works. Now you don't get slapped in the face. Well, look at that. And, you know, it's, it's really easy in a martial art class to get somebody to listen. Because if what they're doing is not working, they're going to get punched in the face. And it hurts. So they're going to figure out pretty quick what works and what doesn't work, or they're going to leave. And you know what? I'm okay with either one. <laughs> I'm really okay with either one. Because if you're not going to be part of the solution, get the fuck out of my way. I don't want you slowing me down. 
right? With your stupidity, with your idiocy, with you fomenting other cretins to, you know, form a crowd of morons in front of me when I'm trying to go through. No, get out of my way. So yes, I will absolutely go after you once you say something idiotic that actually creates an environment that is not healthy, not good for anybody else. And I will point it out. You are a fucking idiot. Be quiet. Look, learn, start to learn with basic maths. You know, if you can't do percentages, if you don't understand what percentages are and how they work, don't talk pretty much about anything. Shut up, get an elementary book on maths and learn. And beyond that, if you don't understand what ratios are, if you don't understand what set theory is, if you don't understand how to apply these things, more or less, you know, I'm not talking genius level stuff, but if you don't know how to do basic algebra, do you really think that you can figure out the percentage of statistics, the likelihood of X, Y, or Z happening? No, you are a functional moron. You go around and you get by and you don't starve to death because you got an app that you can order your food with Uber. You know, that's pretty much why you're alive. You know, it's like, that's why I think it's really important for kids to grow up wild, you know, be in the bush, grow, you know, be, be somewhere where you have to work to get your food. You know, you have to walk somewhere to get your food. You have to maybe farm to get your food. It's important because that will teach you very quickly responsibility. It will teach you to think ahead. It will teach you to plan for tomorrow, not just for like three minutes from now. And you know that these things are important. They're not irrelevant. So there you go. That's why I'm an aggressive bastard online. And you know, in real life too, it doesn't, it's, I'm not different really um, one way or the other unlike most people, um, as any of my friends will tell you. <laughs> so that's the mystery uh, of my um, aggressiveness. And yeah, again, day six, still doing well, uh, all good on the Western Front here. And I hope you're doing equally well. Good night.